Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I did these five easy, beginner-friendly Halloween nail designs. So let's go ahead and start. I am starting off by using my favorite black gel polish. This is Lights Out by Nails by Dev. It is a really, really good one coat black gel polish. You don't need more than one coat with this one. And these are the tools we're going to be needing for the first one. It is going to be a flat a uh, rounded brush and a dotting tool and I am also using Nails by Dev's Blooming Gel and I'm going to be applying one coat. You just need a thin coat on the nail. Um, the black was already cured and once your Blooming Gel is on there you are not going to cure it and you're going to grab the rounded brush and put uh, some white gel polish on it. You don't need too much just like a little glob of it and you are going to make some little ghosts by putting your brush and dragging it down really quick um and this is going to be the easiest way to create a really cute ghost nail with the blooming gel um so i did already cure the first layer and now i feel like i lost a little bit of the white so i went in with a little bit more white and um just put some on again like created another smudge on top just to bring back some of the opaqueness from the white and now you're going to grab the same black gel and then the little dotting tool and you are going to create little eyes and a little mouth um this is so cute you can honestly leave just the little eyes and you don't have to put a mouth but i did put one i think it turned out cute so um i love this version of ghosts instead of just drawing like the cutesy ones i feel like i already did a cutesy tutorial before so i wanted to try something different and i absolutely love how this one turned out um it is perfect for anyone that's beginning and wants to do something quick and easy something that is simple to do that everybody will really love so now we are top coating it with my Koopa matte top coat. It is my favorite matte and it just turns out so cute. Next we're going in with number 042 from Enel Couture. It is just a light baby pink and I'm going to be putting this as the base for my next nail. So the next one I'm going to be showing you guys how to do is a pumpkin. So it's actually a super easy way to do a pumpkin. Um, I feel like pumpkins can be kind of intimidating. Um, you might like not know how to do them really detailed but those are the colors we're going to be using. So you're going to start off by creating an M a really kind of open M so you could see here what I'm doing is just like uh, um, almost like those quick little birds you draw when you're trying to draw like a bird in like school like, like you were when you when you were younger so something like that just a really open M and then you're gonna fill it in um, so that's gonna be the top of your pumpkin and I'm doing it on the on a shorter nail so of course if you were doing a whole pumpkin you can draw the bottom as well but this is for like a long length nail um, I'm filling it in with the same brush and I did just mix those two gel orange gel polishes that I showed you guys right now and I'm also going to be doing another pumpkin right here on top so you're going to do again the M you're going to do the first side and then you're going to do the second side and it doesn't need to be so perfect because you know every pumpkin is different um, one side could be bigger taller it doesn't really matter it still turn out cute and then again you're going to fill it in and then after this you're going to cure and then um, yeah so right here I'm just kind of fixing it a little and um just trying to make it how i wanted it to look i decided to do two pumpkins because i felt like the nail would look too simple with only one and of course cleaning up my edges as i go i forgot to mention on the ghost nail that you should always clean up your edges when you're using blooming gel as well before you cure because the blooming gel spreads so fast that it can quickly go to the edges of your nails and then you don't want them to look lumpy so now I, what I did is i mixed just a little tiny bit of black with those same orange colors that i made and i am going ahead and creating these ridges for the pumpkin so you're basically going to create lines um you're going to create like two on the outside and then two on the inside i will explain right now on the second one um because it went by a little too fast i think i'm going to slow it down actually for you guys so i went ahead and left this in real time so i am going ahead and creating my line just like this so you're kind of basically just going to trace the outside of the m you made the first time around you're going to trace that just to add some dimension so this is all just for dimension this part is honestly optional you don't have to do this but i feel like it just really adds something extra to your pumpkin it makes it look way more realistic obviously i know this doesn't look realistic but you know what i mean um so now we're going to create the outside ridges so from the center you're going to create a line down a basically another m from the middle point of the first m that you made so hopefully that makes sense so um now we're going to create another line from um, the middle point that we made originally it was kind of hard with these nails right next to each other obviously if you were doing this like on a different type of press on stand it would be a little bit easier because the the ghost nail was kind of in my way but this is the only press on stand that i have so i kind of just had to use this 
Um, and of course, if you're doing this on a client for gel -X or acrylic nails, it would be so much easier because you can move their fingers to the side a little bit and you would have way more room for your brush and your hand to be able to go. So um, yeah, we're just creating another little, uh, a few more little lines in the center. And I really hope this tutorial is pretty easy for you guys. I know I'm kind of bad explaining it sometimes, but I really hope it helps you guys. Um, and then again, just kind of go over your lines again. It already looks so cute. It looks like actual pumpkins and I just love this type of um, pumpkin on nails. I just think it looks makes it look so much better with this dimension in it. And now I added a little bit more black to um, the original orange to create this brown. And we're going to do the stem. The best part about the stem is you can make it however you want. You can do a short stem, a longer one, a curly one, just literally whatever you want. I know in real life the stems are like more of a light tan color, um, sometimes even green, but I just wanted to do this. Um, this is just what I did, but like I mentioned, you guys can do this however you guys want. Um, you, you can even make the pumpkins like a creamy white color. That would be really cute too. You can make them pink, whatever color you want. Um, and now I'm grabbing some of the regular orange, the lighter one, and I'm going to be adding more dimension by putting it in between the ridges so this will make it look like there's like light bouncing off the pumpkin more um and it just really adds again just like a nice detail of course this is optional um i just wanted to make it super easy for beginners to learn how to paint things with a little bit more dimension instead of having to draw just like a flat pumpkin um so yeah i this is what i do and i think it looks so cute look at this it's so freaking cute for fall uh of course this is like halloween and fall ish but I love the pumpkin. So now again, I'm going in with my Koopa matte top coat. It is my favorite. I get it on Amazon and it is the best matte because it's just like the perfect, like really, really matte gel. Um, and then I realized that matte always lightens your colors. So the pumpkin kind of got lost in the matte a little bit. So what I would recommend is to go in with a little bit of a darker brown and go back over the ridges before you put your matte top coat on so as you can see here i'm going back over the ridges and it just really made it pop but i had already done the matte top coat so just um you know add a little more dimension before you put your matte and make sure it's exactly how you want it to look because the matte does lighten up the colors a lot um so yeah this is how i ended up looking it looks really cute and of course i cured it i kind of you know cleaned up any mistakes i had and this is what it looked like Next nail we're going to be doing, I mixed some white with the same orange I was using. I was just kind of trying to use the gel polishes I had already like put on my table because I didn't want to waste them. So I'm just going to be creating this light orange uh, with some white and orange. And then I am going to be showing you guys how to do a realistic spider. So this is like one of the main things that I would love uh, you guys to learn more. Like I feel like I never knew really how to draw a spider either. Um, so I'm going to be drawing the, obviously the butt of the spider. I don't know what that part's called, but you know, the butt, and then you're going to draw the little head. Um, you want the butt part to be pretty big because we're going to have to fit eight legs onto this body. So, um, I made it, ended up making it a little bit bigger. Um, I did also want to mention another thing for all these designs. I would recommend using a really, really thin brush. I say this in almost all my videos, but I always customize my brushes. So basically what I do is I'll buy an ultra thin liner brush. Uh, a 10 millimeter would be perfect. And I actually cut it, like I cut the bristles off some of them. I no, like I cut some of the bristles off to make it the thinness that I want because even though it's advertised as ultra thin, it's never thin enough for me. So now we're going ahead and we're going to create a line going out and then another one going in, almost like an open triangle, but without the bottom part. Um, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying, but look like I'm gonna go out and then in. So you want the legs to look like this um, and definitely do not forget to put eight legs on the spider. I see so many, so, so, so many nails and the spiders will have like four legs and then it looks weird, you know, like, or like four or six legs. It almost looks like an ant. So um, yes, definitely make the legs nice and long, make them thin and also make sure you put eight legs on there. Um, we're going to do the same thing for the front of it. And yeah, so I was like one of those, you know, one of those people that didn't know how to do a spider. I think I might have an old picture um, and I probably only put like four or five legs or six legs on there. And, and looking back at it now, I hate the way it looks. Um, so yes, I hope I can help out all my beginners out there with making their spiders look more realistic because this just really helps um, to make sure that you have that like that edge over other spiders and stuff like that i don't know i just think it looks so much cooler so yeah this one's gonna have eight legs and i'm just kind of trying to count them but it was kind of hard they were kind of getting mashed together but it's no problem you won't be able to tell too much um 
and yeah so I'm just adding them making them a little bit darker because they got a little thin and then of course we are going to add the little fangs in the front too just super tiny little fangs I think I add them in a, in a second here um, and yeah I love how this spider looks it looks so cool obviously you can do it a little smaller if you want to do it way smaller you can and uh, like I mentioned the key to getting a really good spider is to use a really thin brush so that the legs aren't so so thick and it'll look super cool so this is my one of my old spider drawings guys like what's even going on here like that has nine legs and it looks like a little beetle or something so yeah this spider is definitely an upgrade from my old work and I love the way it looks it almost looks like kind of real like in person it's like so crazy um and yeah I really really love how it's looking I'm also going to add a little bit of brown on the body just little lines to make it look even more realistic and I feel like it really added to it you can't see it too much but it's still cute and um yeah I just went ahead and added the fangs and I love the way it looks it's really cool and now I'm gonna add the little web that it comes hanging down from and then we're going to mattify it of course I'm going to mattify all of these just because I feel like it really makes them pop and then we're going to cure it and that is what it looks like now for the next nail I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a spider web and how to get the best result so I'm going to be using the same black gel and we're going to cure it and then I'm going to be grabbing a long thin thin brush so I customized this one again of course I cut the bristles off some of it like half of it and um, made it super thin and you're going to grab barely any gel on your brush like you almost want it to not even be able to look like it has gel on it uh, you want it to barely have anything and you're going to create the lines of a spider web so you're going to create one down the middle two on the sides and then two more on the other side so um, i'm going to do another one down here i believe later in a second here but now you're going to grab the brush and you're going to create the little web part for this one i like using a little shorter brush because you have more control i think i end up switching brushes in a second i don't remember exactly if i do or not but um what using this long brush to create the little webbing part is really difficult so um yeah i'm kind of just kind of trying to do it here but it is a little hard because the brush you don't have so much control when when it's so long like this and with a little bit of short a little bit shorter brush as long as it's really thin you will get really nice webbing as well so here i am creating the webbing part you just want it to go in a row all the way around so you want to start off with the smallest ones bigger and bigger and bigger and you want them to line up at the end so you see how they kind of line up here i didn't do it so perfect but um they do line up and that makes it look like the perfect web also another thing these lines you want to make sure you have them ready and done first because you can't go back in and make another line once your webbing is already there because it'll make it look like a natural I would I don't know how to explain it but um yeah so I did these webs and I think they're so cool they turned out so so good and I absolutely just love the way I have like grown to do them and the key is definitely the longer brush or the not the longer the thinner brush the thinner brush gives you the better webs so see now I switched to my smaller brush because I'm doing a smaller web here um, this brush is also very very thin it's just a little shorter so this is about a 10 millimeter and the one I was using for the bigger web was a 15 millimeter I think um, 15 or 20 so yeah now we're doing the webs and again just make sure there's barely little to no gel on your brush like you want there to be barely anything just enough to create the webbing because the webbing should be very thin and that's what's going to give it that really cool realistic look um literally you guys i'm so like perfectionist sometimes with my nails that even that other web like the one that i did first i was looking at it and i was like it looks kind of thick like i honestly wanted to redo it but i was like no it looks good so um i left it but i would prefer it to be a little thinner just because that's how I am like I always have to go back and redo things if I don't like the way it looks um I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are like that too but yeah now I'm going to be doing a really cool nail it is going to be a cute little mummy we're going to do again the black gel polish if you guys haven't tried this black gel polish you totally should it's literally amazing it's a game changer it has never peeled or wrinkled for me either which is a big thing that I struggle with with black gels um, so we're going in with the black and then curing it and then you're going to go in, go in with your dotting tool and some white and you are going to draw two circles for eyes they can be mismatched they can be different sizes it doesn't matter um, and then you are going to go in and put some yellow I had this yellow that was 
glow in the dark that was perfect for these eyes so I went ahead and did it and I left some on the outer edges so it looks like the eyes are glowing and then I went in with my dotting tool and did two black dots in the middle for the eyeballs and then now we're going in with some white gel polish and my little I think this is a 10 millimeter brush um, and I'm just doing random lines this is real time I didn't speed it up or slow it down so you guys can see how easy it is to do you're just gonna do lines back and forth almost like a zebra type of look but it's gonna end up looking really cute like a mummy um, and you want to put high pressure when you're doing this you don't want the line you don't want the lines to be too too thin I or at least that's how I wanted mine to look um, I wanted the lines to be a little thicker so I'm doing it thinner where I want it to be thinner and then thicker where I feel like it should be thicker so just kind of like apply pressure to your brush and then loosen pressure on your brush you know what I mean uh, and it looks so freaking cute and I also did put in a little bit of yellow mixed in with some of the white and went over it one more time and a little tiny bit of brown as well to make the uh, mummy like toilet paper whatever it is like the the gauze look more dirty not so that it doesn't look so so white so I basically just wanted to add more detail and dimension into it and I absolutely love how it turned out he's so freaking cute like he's cute but spooky at the same time you know what I mean and I think I like totally love the way it looks I think these would be so cute if you did different types of mummies on like a French tip like French tip mummies that's a really cute idea I might do that uh, for a video but this is how they turned out you guys I really hope you enjoyed this video these are some of my favorite little easy designs that I've done. Quick and easy tutorial. I absolutely love these and I really hope they help you guys out if you are a beginner or struggling with nail art. I will see you guys in my next one. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!